Hi, my name is Morley, and this is my tiny apartment workshop. It may not look like much, but I squeeze a lot out of this space. And before I was working out of this tiny apartment workshop, I was making stuff out of two other apartments that were even smaller. So I have a lot of experience getting over the barriers inherent in small apartments. And I wanted to make this video for anyone who's trying to make something and they don't feel like they have enough space. And I can assure you that with a little bit of creativity, you can really make this space work. So before we dive too much into the details of my setup, I wanna set the scene in how small this workshop really is. So what I like to call my workshop is actually a corner of the living room that I share with my girlfriend, Eden. Hi, Eden, she's behind the camera right now. And our cat, Penny, who is the third roommate. And the one who surprisingly does the least amount of work in the apartment. So yeah, we have our kitchen table, our couch, and then this space is just one corner of the room. And it's pretty small. I mean, it starts about right here. And from the edge of that bookcase to the wall, oh, Penny loves the tape measure, here we go. It's about nine feet long this way. And it comes out about five feet to where I'm standing right now. So not a lot of room, but a lot is packed in here. And the heart of everything is the workbench, as is the heart of every workshop. So this is actually an Ikea desk that I got off of Facebook Marketplace. Toronto has a lot of colleges and universities. So especially in the fall, when kids are moving in or moving out, or in the spring, basically any time there's a turnover, people are trying to get rid of furniture and you can get some fantastic deals online. And this workbench is perfect for me. It has a really big surface. It is about 28 inches by 57 inches. And as you can see, there is a lot going on. So I like to think of myself as a relatively organized person, but I also like having all of the things that I use most within reach. So if you've seen any of my videos before, you know that I do a lot of leatherworking. And the heart of this workbench is this big granite slab. Um, these are incredibly useful in leatherworking as essentially a flat, consistent surface to deaden the blow of hammer strikes when you're doing any sort of tooling. And it actually just makes for a really great work surface for all types of projects. When I was doing leatherworking out of my previous apartment, I would lift this up onto the table and onto the ground when I wasn't doing leatherworking, but I've since learned that it's just great to have here all the time. I got this when my parents were renovating the kitchen for free because this would be carted away to a landfill, otherwise it's too small to be reused for anything else. And there are lots of places you can get slabs like this if you're interested in leatherworking. Um, stone cutting yards, a lot of times, they will offer things like this for free. They are quite heavy, so this isn't something you can just throw in your backpack. This is, um, I wanna say, 40 pounds. Sounds about right, Eden? Yeah, so essentially the heart of my workbench and a great thing just to leave here. And that actually brings me to leatherworking as a practice in a small apartment workshop. I actually started leatherworking when one of my friends wanted to make something and he asked me um, what is a craft that he could pick up to do out of his apartment. And I told him, well, I've heard leatherworking is this great thing that you just need a desk to do. And then I realized, I was like, well, woodworking out of my apartment and on my balcony is very messy and probably not the most conducive thing. So maybe I should take my own advice and try this craft. And I did, and it is the perfect thing to do out of an apartment. Like I said, you just need a tabletop, plenty of light as you can see here, and you're pretty much off to the races. I have a cutting mat store down here that I just put on the workbench when I need it, and it's really, really great for an apartment. There is a little bit of noise output if you're doing any sort of tooling, then there is hammering. But something I found in all of my tiny apartment workshops is that you just have to be respectful. People accept a certain level of noise during normal working hours. And this is actually something that I learned from Nick Offerman. If you communicate with your neighbors, tell them what you're doing and keep it to nine to five, Monday to Friday, maybe start a little bit later on the weekends, you should be fine. That 
story is a little different if you're dealing with power tools, but I'll touch on that a little later in the video. We are very lucky that our downstairs neighbor is currently an empty commercial space, but we do have a neighbor just on the other side of that wall. Um, so I try not to make too much noise early in the morning or late at night. One thing that is inherent in leatherworking is a lot of chemicals, as you can see Penny is investigating here. There are dyes and oils and contact cement. Those are all things that I really don't want her to get at. So the moment we got Penny, I added this little cat proofing to this Ikea bookshelf where I used to store a lot of my tools and materials. So this just slides up on rails and you can see in there that I have my wood glues, my dyes, everything in here. The really nice thing about working in an apartment is that you don't have to worry about anything freezing. Temperature control is all good um, and this simple little plywood cover is great for keeping Penny out. Although every time I open it, as you, like, as you can see now, she likes to come over and investigate. So this unit as a whole stores a lot of my tools and materials. Um, it is not the most organized thing in the world, but it does the job for me. I have these toolboxes, which I like to call my deep storage, things that I don't have to access very often. Everything that I do access more often, as I mentioned before, I like to keep around me. Um, and I'll cycle those in and out as necessary. I always need rulers. I always need thread for leatherworking. Rags are incredibly useful, so I always have those within reach. Sponges for leatherworking, neat's foot oil, a calculator. All of this stuff are things that I'm always reaching for, so I like to have them within reach. Someday I would like to have a larger workbench and have a little, a larger workshop rather, and be able to put things in their place a little more, but for now this works really well for me. So going back to this unit, bit storage, all of the packaging I use to send out commissions. I'm very diligent about saving all of the bubble wrap and brown paper that I get in Amazon packages. Um, but I also have some new boxes here, lots of bubble wrap, and then my leather storage. This is a little sparse at the moment. Um, I'm pretty ripe for a re-up of my leather supplies, but just adding these plywood dividers made it a lot easier to organize things a little more. And then I have smaller scraps organized here. Parchment paper, which I use all the time for tracings and leatherworking. And then on the top of the shelf is the things I don't use quite as often, which at the moment actually is my power tools. So in the past, I have done some woodworking in my apartment, but now that I'm sharing it with Eden here, um, it is not the nicest thing for your roommates. Dust gets everywhere, it's very loud. Um, when I was living with roommates, I would limit it to my bedroom when no one was home, again, during normal working hours. But these days, if I have to cut any sort of large pieces of lumber, I try to go to a backyard that I have access to. I would encourage you, if you do want to do any woodworking out of an apartment, if you have a balcony, that is a fantastic place to cut up stuff. Uh, my first apartment, I got a surprising amount done on my balcony, especially a fire escape as well because you have a lot more length to work with. But now that I have access to a backyard, it's a much nicer experience to be able to spread out on the ground. This standing desk and 3D printer enclosure, Again, I cut all the lumber in a backyard, but everything was assembled. Um, the drawers were put in, the fronts put on, the acrylic, all of that was done just right here on the floor. I'll usually just pull the rug aside a little bit and sweep up the dust. The operations that make much dust in here are just drilling holes or doing a bit of trimming with my Japanese pole saw. So, Limiting the really, really dusty stuff to outside, I think is the best way to go. But you can still do a lot of work. Do you want to take it out real quick? Are you still filming? Okay. Dinner! <laughs> Action! Just some real B-roll. <laughs> so as I was saying, limiting the really dusty work to an outside area, if you can find something to have access, is really the best way to go. And then you can do all the final assembly and smaller scale stuff in a small space like this. So in this unit, I have my 3D printer on the bottom, which has really been a fantastic addition to my tiny apartment workshop in the past year. 
3D printers don't make a lot of noise, especially if uh, your printer is well set up. And it adds an incredible amount to the things I'm able to do. I'm currently working on a project that requires a box, essentially. And rather than having to make a woodworked box, I can 3D print the enclosure and really do things that I wasn't able to do before. Up top, I have some storage for filament, my calipers, rubbing alcohol, some Arduino things. This, the vision for this was a little more organized, but it does the job right now. And eventually I will get this all a little more organized. And then on top, this is the standing desk. Um, a lot of times in the heart of projects, it's a little covered with things as it kind of is now. But since we're working from home a lot these days, I don't have the option to really go to a cafe and do any editing there. This is a great place, a great third place for me to go and work on my computer, do some editing, record a podcast. I have the window right here, which is very nice and some plants. So it is a really great third spot to work. If we just go into the corner a little bit, this is a little more chaotic. Um, just storage of materials, some cardboard that I use for protecting the surface when I'm doing any sort of dyeing. And then under this trash can is actually where I store my concrete. These Home Depot buckets are pretty perfect for an 80 pound, I think 80 pound bag of concrete you can store in there. Um, so that is my current solution for that. I wanna come back to the workbench a little bit and highlight one of the most important parts about a workshop, which is good lighting. So what I have is this nice LED daylight lamp on one side and an architect's lamp on the other. So this has a clamp where you can attach it to the table, but it also has screw holes. So I never have to worry about if I yank this too hard that it's going to come out. It is attached to the tabletop. And what I love about this light is I can position it in essentially any place that I want, um, which is great for videos. But if you don't make videos, it's also great just to see your stuff. Lighting is so, so important. And I also have some headlamps in here. So if I really need to get at something, I can see it perfectly. If we come down into this sort of inside corner of the workshop, you see something that is a characteristic of working out of a rented space. And that is, I have all these things mounted on the bookcase. So since we are in a rented apartment, I try to limit the amount of screw holes in the walls and limit the amount of filling that I'll have to do when we leave. So I have all my tape sort of attached to this bookcase. And this thing, which is fantastic, I got it on Facebook Marketplace for $30 or so. All sorts of screw storage. Lots of little things that I can keep organized. And as you can see, um, I haven't even used this thing to its full potential. I have some leather working hardware and rivets that I could really move into here at any point. If we move around the storage unit, you can really see on this side that I've tried to use every available surface. I have my Japanese pole saw, other saws all mounted to the side. This thing, let me tell you, is a godsend for a little apartment workshop. It cuts so fast, so cleanly, and it really makes it so that if you want to do any sort of woodworking inside, you don't always have to break out the circular saw or the jigsaw. It is an absolute pleasure to use, and tools like that, which you enjoy using and that do the job well, are always fantastic. And as much as I can in here, I try to limit the amount of power tools. So. This thing, if you're working out of a small space, I would highly recommend you get one of those. I know my friend Jacob at Native Sun Wood Art is a big fan of the Japanese pole saw as well. He's another guy who works out of a small space and he gets a lot of use out of it. One thing you might've noticed behind my workbench is this big poster I made from a vintage graphic design catalog. I have always had a thing for typography and graphic design and it was really fun spending a day where I didn't have another project lined up, just flipping through that notebook picking out some of my favorite vintage fonts, um, having a nice variety. So having this behind my workbench is a really great little source of inspiration. That is something I would like to increase in future workshops, the inspiring things behind, but I have Grant Alexander's wonderful frame that he made for the ouch mouse, as he likes to call it, the Halo Health Pack first aid kit, <laughs> and my sticker board, which I need to make another one of soon. But I will probably wait to do that until I move into my next tiny apartment workshop because in about a month, 
we are actually going to be moving. And Eden is very happy that my workshop in the next place won't be a corner of our living room. It'll actually be the majority of a separate room. So I'm super excited to set that up, really spend some time organizing a little more than this is now and add some more inspiration to the walls. Um, it's gonna be awesome. And I hope you stick around for the journey. So that is my tiny apartment workshop. And if you only have access to a small space like this, I hope that this video inspired you that all you really need to make things out of a small space is a little bit of perseverance, creativity. If you can get access to an outdoor space to cut larger pieces of lumber, that is really nice. But a lot of it just comes down to thoughtfulness and a little more preparation than if you had a big workshop. Keeping in mind your neighbors, keeping in mind what you have access to and really taking full advantage of your particular situation. And if you can get a shop cat, they make everything a little more interesting. Thank you so much for watching. I'm really excited to move into the next workshop and share that journey with you. Have a great day. Say bye, Penny. Bye. She wants me to put her down. She's biting me. All right.